Hello and welcome to web learning where knowledge is shared. In today's tutorial I'll show different things that were added to the STM32 CubeMX. In your version that you're using there are probably new features that I've not covered but at least you'll be able to get most of the features that the STM32 CubeMX will give you. So right from the beginning from the main window most of the buttons are the same. Some small changes that were made under help, magic embedded software package. This stage you'll see the MCU package, all of them are grouped together by the microcontroller and there is a new tab. This tab gives you embedded packages that are now available to be implemented into the STM32 CubeMX. For this example, you can add the Blue Energy MS package directly to the middleware and in the near future, ST and other third parties will add more packages so you can immediately add them into your project and they will be incorporated as part of your code. In order to add the package, all you need to do is highlight it and click Install Now. That's it. Now that it's on, you'll be able to add it as part of the middleware. Close. New project. Also in this window there are some new changes. First of all the list of peripherals has been increased. SD has now 1132 items. So some new features were also added to the list. You can still choose by core, by series, by line, by package and flash and other requirements. There is a graphic choice that I'll explain in a minute uh, in more detail. In the board selector now, you can also choose by the peripherals that you can find within the board. So for example, if you want a board with the light sensor, you just click it and then you can see all the evil boards that have this. If you want an LCD segment display, you can choose one and again you can see all the list of different boards that are available. When selecting a demo board, also here ST made a small change. By double clicking the board, a new window when it comes up it says initialize all peripheral with the default mode if you click yes then all the pins will be set as the demo board is used if you click no then the pins will be left untouched but they will stay with their names as you can see if i clicked yes i see all the pins if i click no only the important pins are set all the rest are just have their names going back to the mcu selector if we click the graphic choice, then we get a new list of graphics criteria. We also get a graphic summary. This graphic summary gives you the total RAM needed for the graphic object and the user can check availability of the graphics performance. Also, you'll see here the GFX score. This will give you the ability to choose the microcontroller with the best performance. So what do we have this in the graphic choice? First of all, we have the display resolution. It means it's asking us what type of resolution we want to choose to our LCD. For example, 640 by 480. Then display interface. What type of display interface do we have? Is it RGB parallel or DVI video or DVI command? This is the frame buffer format. If it's a 16, 24 or 32. What type of RAM are we using for the graphics buffer? Is it the internal RAM or external SDRAM? And the GFX flash. Is it internal flash or we're using NOR or Quad SPI or any other interface? In this example, I chosen internal RAM and internal flash. And I chosen the display interface and the frame buffer. And here you can see all the available parts I can choose. If I'll take a different display interface, again, the list has changed and this is what's available. We can sort, for example, by package, or by flash, or by unit price. As an example, I'll take this part. We can see that the DSI output is already enabled. Get it going correctly, we'll have to check the CRC. The DMA to D, that's a DMA for the graphics. The FMC, because we wanted an external SDRAM. the LTDC and the Quad SPI. After this, we can go up and select the graphics middleware of the SDM Win with the display face using the L2DC. After we finish that, again the clock configuration is as usual, nothing is changed. In the configuration now, we have the middleware, 
the graphics. In this interface, you'll be able to configure all the parameters that the STM UI application is using. Here you can see if to use the GUI Builder tool, you can see the size of the display, the frame buffer, the memory size, and the rest of the parameters. The STM WinLab, here you can see the graphics application category, if it's a frame window or a window. As always, see a bit more information down here at the, this window. At this stage, we need to open the STMWin GUI Builder. So we can click Execute. This will give us the project settings. This will set a project for this. Give it a name. We'll choose type of ID that we want to use. And we can change the advanced settings if we want using HAL or LL for the different peripherals. Okay, so as you can see, the Cubemix opened the GUI Builder. Now, here you can see the graphics application cate category, and this is the physical display size. You can add, for example, a button, and we can add a checkbox, and we can do another button. And when we're done, we need to click Save, and we need to click Exit. After we're done, we need to click OK. Right here at the corner, we have also an application that's the GFX simulator. We can click first of all on import settings. And the simulator just imported all the settings that we set in the software. For example, the screen size, the type of memory, the frame buffer, and the bus itself. On the right window, you can see the current configuration. And in the left window, you can see a similar configuration. On the left window, it's black. And on the right window, it's gray. What it means that you are able to change on the simulator configuration that the different types of memory or the frame buffers, you can compare between the two to see what are the end results. For example, we can enable the L2DC, disable it, see what type of effects it has, can enable the Quad SPI, and see all the effects that's happening in our simulator. On the top here, you have a list of assumptions and limitations you might have. And that's it for the graphic simulator. The other new features that you have, if for example, this is the F479, at LQFP 144 and now I wanted to change this use the Cortex M4 I'll click file and here we have the import choice so now we can import an IOC file open I can try to import we can see that it implemented as much as possible because it couldn't it gave me already a list of what he couldn't import. Okay. Okay. And now we have a, a small problem with the boot, but again, it managed to import to the features. But for the DSI, that this part doesn't have a DSI base. Other things that are also have been implemented the last time. So user label. If you have a name to any of those pins, for example, if I'll take this pin and I will do it as a GPIO input, I'll change the name, for example, to LED. This will change the user label to either to the default pin name or to the user label. Another feature that was added if you right click, you can do pin stacking. This will give you a choice to choose different options to the same pin. For example, if sometimes you want this pin to be a GPIO input and other times you want to be as an ADC1. You can have it with all those functions and you can see that the list is populated in the pin itself. In one of the versions, 
the Cubemix will generate also the code for all the pin stacking modes. At this point, uh, STM Cubemix will generate only to the default mode. And now it's the GPIO input because it's green. Another feature, as we showed in the embedded software packages, I need to go to project, select additional software components. Here we have the Blue Energy MS application. I can click, can click here, for example, the Condemo. After setting all the selection correctly, we can see that the status all of them are green. Now we can click OK. And we can see the additional software of the Blue Energy MS. And we can click Blue Energy MS and the wireless application. It's green. At this stage, you see that we've also added the Bluetooth Low Energy stack into our Cubemix go to configuration and click on the blue energy mess here we have the parameter settings and the platform fed settings that's it i hope you enjoyed it if you did uh, click the thumbs up if you have any comments or questions just add them and i'll try to answer all of them don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll get the notification when, I up when I'm uploading new videos. Thank you.